1973, Anthony Hopkins was getting ready for a role in The Girl from Petrovka, a movie based on George Pfeiffer's novel. He wanted to read the book first but couldn't find it in any London bookstore because it was out of print. Heading home on the subway, Hopkins saw someone leave a book behind. To his surprise, it was the exact book he was looking for. This coincidence became even more astounding when he met George Pfeiffer, the author, who mentioned he had lost a copy of the book on the subway months earlier. Today we're talking about something called synchronicity. It's a pretty cool idea that was thought up by a psychologist named Carl Gustav Jung. Synchronicity is basically when something happens in your life that feels really meaningful, like it's connected to what's going on inside you. Think of it like this. Have you ever noticed how sometimes things just seem to line up perfectly, like it's all meant to be? That's kind of what synchronicity is all about. It's like the universe is sending you a message or trying to tell you something. Now, I've got to admit, I'm a bit torn about this stuff. Part of me is like a no-nonsense, skeptical scientist who thinks everything can be explained by facts and logic. But then there's another part of me that's more into the whole spiritual side of things, believing that everything happens for a reason. Synchronicity is one of those things that can feel really powerful, especially when you're in a spiritual kind of mood. It's like the universe is speaking directly to you. But then there are times when I start to doubt it all. I mean, maybe I'm just seeing what I want to see, you know? Like if I start thinking about red cars, suddenly I see them everywhere. Maybe it's all just in my head. But Young, the guy who came up with this idea, he believed that synchronicity was more than just coincidence. He thought it was about finding meaning in the world around us, like there's some deeper connection between everything. He talked about how synchronicity is different from the usual cause and effect stuff we learn about in science. It's more about feeling than logic, more about what things mean to us personally. I actually found a video about him talking about this stuff. Let's play it. At the same time, something else, quite independently, happens that portrays just that uh, thought. Yeah. For instance, just so I speak of a, of a, of a red uh, car, and at that moment, a, a red car comes here. You see? Yes. Now, I hadn't seen it. It was impossible because it was behind the building. In this moment, the red car appears. We can't say, now this car has appeared because here was uh, some remarks have been made about the red car. Yeah, it's not uh, cause and effect. Oh, this is yes. a miracle that yes. the red car appears. It is not it is chance, yes. it's just chance. But these chances happen uh, more, the, uh, more often than chance allows. Yeah. And that shows that there is something there. So, imagine there are two ways to see the world. One where everything is made of matter and gears, and another where everything is connected by some kind of universal mind. Jung was more into the second idea. An example of a synchronistic event in Carl Jung's life took place during a therapy session with one of his clients. His client was a highly educated and rational woman with a serious attitude. Jung knew he would not be able to get through to her on a deeper level unless an irrational event occurred in the form of a coincidence. So he looked for any opportunity to reach her. Shortly after, the woman began describing a significant dream of a golden scarab, which is a costly piece of jewellery. As she was describing this beetle in more depth, Jung heard a tapping at the window behind him. He opened the window and revealed a live goldish-green scarab beetle, not native to the area. Astonished, Young quickly grabbed the beetle and walked it over to the woman and said, Here is your scarab. This event was enough to help break the woman from her overly rationalistic worldview and connect her dream world to her waking life, a fundamental revelation in Jungian psychology. Here is another example. Young writes about what seems to be a synchronistic event. On April 1st, 1949, I wrote down a note about a half man, half fish figure in the morning. For lunch, we had fish. Someone mentioned the April Fool's Day tradition of calling someone an April fish that afternoon. A former patient I hadn't seen in months showed me some striking fish pictures. In the evening, I saw embroidery featuring sea monsters and fish. The next morning, a patient who hadn't visited me in 10 years told me she dreamt of a big fish. Months later, as I was writing about these fish-related incidents for a project, I went to a spot by the lake near my house. I had been there several times that day, but this time I found a foot-long fish on the seawall. No one else was around, so I have no idea how the fish got there. 
When a lot of coincidences happen like this, they really catch your attention. But Young wasn't sure it was about synchronicity because it didn't connect with his inner thoughts. He thought maybe it was just a really unlikely coincidence that six events happened together and then a seventh happened months later. From when he was young, Carl Young noticed weird things happening that he couldn't explain. He was worried he was losing his mind and wanted to understand what these events meant. I saw yellow waves, swimming rubble, and thousands dying. After two weeks, the vision came back even more intense, and a voice inside me said, this is real, and it's going to happen. You can't doubt it. These intense visions happened right before World War I started. When the war did start, Young knew he wasn't developing schizophrenia. He realized his dreams and visions were coming from a deeper place shared by everyone. On one occasion, Young and the members of a seminar he was conducting on dream analysis were discussing the symbol of the bull god in relation to the dream of an analysand. In aware of the discussions of the seminar group, the analysand spent several days making a picture of a bull with the disc of the sun between its horns. On another occasion, Young wrote the following. For instance, I walk with a woman patient in a wood. She tells me about the first dream in her life that had made an everlasting impression upon her. She had seen a spectral fox coming down the stairs in her parental home. At this moment, a real fox comes out of the trees not 40 yards away and walks quietly on, the path ahead of us for several minutes. The animal behaves as if it were a partner in the human situation. Young kept running into things throughout his life that didn't make sense if you only thought about them logically. One summer, while he was studying, he heard a loud noise like a gunshot. He found that a solid table had cracked on its own. A couple of weeks later, he heard a similar noise again. This time, he found that a bread knife, which had just been used, was broken into several pieces inside a cupboard. Young completed his medical training and became a psychiatrist. He was interested in communicating with the dead through seances, and he was also curious about parapsychology and mysterious subjects, mostly because of the strange things he had experienced himself. This curiosity led him to write his medical thesis in 1902, called On the Psychology and Pathology of So-Called Occult Phenomena. There are different types of synchronicities, like warning or alert synchronicities, confirmation and prophetic synchronicities, manifestation and opportunity synchronicities. These events can help us make decisions, confirm our choices, warn us of dangers, or lead us to new opportunities. To experience synchronicities, we need to pay attention to the details of our lives and be open to new experiences. By staying aware of the signs and patterns around us, we can align ourselves with the universe's flow and make better decisions in our lives.